very blunt question. But France is lying to you. <laughs> That's all coming up on tonight's National Nightly News. Hi David, I have a call for you, I'm just putting it through. Alright mate, Dave here. Listen, uh, I know you've only come in to clean up the place, but I've got a bit caught up, so uh, you're going to have to run the news tonight. Now don't worry, it's not hard and I'm going to stay on the phone and help you. First, I'm going to give you a quick tour of the broadcast room, so if you're not doing it already, look forwards towards all those screens. Right, look up at the top, that coloured bar is your audience. You want to keep the viewers going up and not down. Underneath that, you've got the screens. The one on the right is the broadcast screen. That's what the viewers are seeing at home. It's only a couple of seconds behind the master screen there in the middle. That's the one you control. Now, the four small screens on the left show the different signals coming from the studio, and you can choose between them using the numbered buttons on the vision mixer at the bottom left. Don't worry. I'll talk you through it and you'll pick it up in no time. Now, have a look to your left. These plugs control everything in the studio. I've left them set up for you, so provided you haven't fiddled with them, all you have to do now is throw the master trip switch and we're in business. Once you've got the power on, face the front again. You can see on the broadcast screen that we're in the end titles for the show before us. Fortunately, they go on for fucking ages, so there's plenty of time for me to explain... Oh, right, okay, they're over, so we haven't got long now till the broadcast. Right, quickly, mate, look down under the desk. You can see a load of videotapes on the left. They're your adverts. Pick any three and load them into the machines on the right. When you've done that, look up to the front again. Old ladies and East Screecher. That's followed at 8 p.m. by a training documentary series. Right, won't be long now till the signal starts coming through from the station. Stay on your toes. All the bigwigs are in tonight because of the election, so we better not make any mistakes. At 9 p.m., sit back and relax with multiple award-winning movies. When you get the signal, select screen one with the vision mixer and we're ready to go. Oh, Pouring oh, a mayonnaise. Mm. You don't see if you make me go out in the pasture. Yeah, I thought it might increase our viewing figures. Every day. You offer me prawns every day. Ten seconds, everybody. That's how I show love. You're trying to kill me. And yet you persist. Oh, going in five, four. Oh, but now, it's time to join Jeremy Donaldson. Good evening, I'm Jeremy Donaldson. Our main story is tonight. Okay, we're all good. Next is going to be to throw the news titles on screen too. There'll be a countdown, but I'll count you in as well. Just relax, mate. It's all gravy. Honest Andy's totally independent and corners the flawed market. Top chat. Sports fans everywhere. Celebrate as positive footballer Johnny Hans leaves. Win sports personality of the year. And a spoonful of sugar. And Megan will be chatting with movie star Lawrence Vonderklatch about his new movie, The Medicated. And, of course, we'll be going live to advance headquarters to hear what the leaders of this fledgling party have to say on their historic Right. Button two, in three, two, one, now. Lovely, mate. Next thing is to throw back to Jeremy with button one when that globe in the middle shrinks down and vanishes. Switch to screen one. Now, lovely mate. The votes are in and it's a decisive win for advance. We often get 
the land of interference around you're this time, right? Keep your eye on the machine the and the pole line, and use the right stick on your wireless control and to move the wave up and down, down. keeping the green beam in the point of view. The critics have accused him of a severe lack of actual policy and of being deliberately vague. And of being the opposition parties have all conceded defeat to Advance's overwhelming mandate, but have yet to appear public. However, former Home Secretary... Right, it's going well. All you've got to do now is play the advert at the end of the segment. Make sure you don't play it too early or we'll all get fired. Now the clock at the top is counting you down to the advert. When it reaches zero, press one of the three play ad buttons over there at the bottom right. I normally play the first one at the first break and so on, but you can play them in any order you want. I'll count you into it as well, but keep your eye on the clock. You hear the co-leader's acceptance. And three, two, one, advert. One minute back, everybody. Jeremy, I need you to fill after the ads. What? Why? Wanker Snatch is running late. Oh, I well thought I'd ask him about the election. Personally, I wouldn't try to confuse him with any big words. Hmm, that's the same policy we Don't use worry, with you. Ladies. I thought that was no, our little secret. Me, Johnny it's all right, he doesn't remember right anything I tell you. I'm deeply uncomfortable <laughs> with your burgeoning Johnny. friendship. Mm. Happy yeah. Happy Happy Wicked. We made it to the first ad break. You're doing great, mate. But this is where it starts getting a bit trickier. This next sequence is what we call a multi-cam sequence because you're going to be cutting between multiple cameras to keep things interesting. A lot of it's down to personal taste, but here's three good rules of thumb. One, try and keep the shot on whoever is doing the talking. Two, don't stay on the same shot for too long, 10 seconds at the most. So if you're on the person who's talking, try and throw in the odd reaction shot or pull out to the wide shot for a bit just to keep it interesting. Three, don't stay on reaction shots for too long. A couple of seconds is usually enough. Then the audience want to see who's doing the talking, yeah? Stick to these rules and you'll be fine. It's not as complicated as it sounds. You've seen programs on television, haven't you? Make it look like those. Might as well get screen one selected now. No need to wait for the broadcast to start. Try and stay ahead, mate. Quiet in the studio. Thank you so much for... Ten seconds, everybody. With Johnny Hamsley. Going in five, four, three. Welcome back to the National Nightly News. Welcome back to Later, we'll be hearing from shock election winners Later, advance. But first, get ready to go to Megan on screen four. Is here with a star of both Megan stage and is screen. Megan? Stage and thank screen. you, Jeremy. Megan, Megan? Wolf, culture thank correspondent. You, and Megan today Wolf, I have a guest who starred in everything from Shakespeare to the Right, go to Blunderclatch on screen three when she says his name. By none other than Lawrence Blunderclatch. Thank you so much for coming on. Oh, my dear. I do hope you believe me when I tell you. I do hope that being with you today is a long Switch to two for the wide now. <laughs> May I say having you here with us is among us. <laughs> right, now just try and stay on whoever's talking. Movie, which is called The Medicated. The Medicated? Yes. <laughs> wow, medicated. what was that like? Yes. Well, wow. as, I like? Well, as I said That's to Peter the Rat, Peter, Peter Jensen, the director. Give us a look at Megan's reaction. Lovely. Movie. Now back to Thunder Twat. I've worked with him on several movies, all terribly successful. I said movies, to Peter, what a wild ride movie. this has been. What a wild and do you know what, ride Megan? this has been. I really meant that. Wow, that is fantastic. And oh, am I right in saying fantastic. that the character you play in this movie right is quite an academic one? Absolutely right. A scientist. Absolutely Was that right. a challenge a at all? What exactly are you implying? What exactly are you implying? But seriously, yes, you're right. But it was a complete yes, departure right. from my last starring role last when I played Sergeant role. Brock Rockman in Sergeant Bullet Man. Rockman You'll remember that that was the true story. Been on that show a bit long. Fight for a love that surpasses all others. Fight for a love. A love, of course, for freedom. A love, of course. I think it's grossed over a billion dollars, but I think uh, it's grossed over obviously, who's counting? Uh, it's a role that saw you scoop two best actor awards, <laughs> if I remember correctly. It's so sweet of you to mention it. But I really so am not in it for the awards, really although those, three, awards. Little those three, three little statues do take pride of place on my mantelpiece. Uh, with, with, so, sure. with all the others, I'm sure. So, if you're not doing it for the awards, what is it then that drives you? What is it then that drives you? That is a beautiful question, Megan. And not easy to answer. question, Megan. And not easy to like answer. you, like you, I'm afraid. Cut me, afraid. and I will Cut bleed. And, and often, I will bleed. That's how it feels, often, doesn't it? That's how it feels, doesn't it? Doesn't bleeding, doesn't it? 
Giving. Freedom. Suffering Giving. for one's audience. Suffering for one's audience. I suppose in the end, I do it for the difference. I suppose in the end, I do it. For I do the it for the people that I inspire. I do it for the people. The that little I inspire. people. But most of all, I think I do it for the positive but change all, that I, I can bring about in the world. And today, of course, <laughs> we're today, in for some course, real change, it looks like, in the coming few months. What do you make of this historic what election result? What do you make of this historic oh, well. <laughs> well, now you're asking. Historic well, election result. Asking. Indeed. Historic, historic is the word. Is well, indeed. Historic difficult, is isn't it? Very difficult. But, difficult, um, isn't it? Very I think difficult. I've always been quite... Clear that when it comes to politics, that one should always strive to strive not to fuck things up. Shit, he swore. Oh, oh well, don't worry, he won't do it again. Sorry, Shit, he did it again. Okay, don't panic. I'll explain how to deal with swearing at the break. Which opens next week. Right, they've swapped the shot of Jeremy on screen one for a VT of the movie clip. You'll get a countdown on the screen, but I'll just let Megan cue you in. My character, Dr. Lance Hemlock, is is faced with a decision that could affect humanity's very survival. Affect humanity's Exciting very stuff. Survival. Let's take a look. Exciting stuff. Let's take a look. Cool, looks like Blunder Clash is losing it in the studio, but we ain't got time for that. There's more interference coming. It. It's a bit trickier this time, mate. Hold down the R2 button, your wireless controller, and as the frequency changes, match it to the white bit by gently pushing the right stick. You think I don't know that? You think now we're going to squash the frequency back by dragging left. No one thinks we mustn't. That's Dr. Lance to you, Miss Flanagan. Miss Flanagan. Chubbly, mate. Baby. Next, we're going to change the amplitude. Same as last time. Hold down the R2 button, but this time, move the right stick. Upwards, mate. Upwards. Doctor. I'm drowning, Lance, you said. You need to see this. No, it's right, now let's match it back by going downwards. The virus. The sterility. The sterility. This formula. This formula. This, this is the key. Yes. Bloody perfect, mate. We have to ask us. At the end of the clip, you'll want to play another ad. Remember to use the clock at the top to count you in. As you turn it up, you'll hear the advert getting louder. Good. It's set to star censoring. Like I say, it takes a little practice, but I'll try and help you through it, and soon we'll have you bleeping like a pro. Remember, button lights up, count one, two, and hold it down. Remember to select screen one now that you've got your feet. Don't wait for the broadcast to go live after it's too late. You can use the buttons on your wireless controller to select the screen as you want. Seriously? We've had worse. Five, four, three... Welcome back. And I'm told we can now go Welcome live back. to advance headquarters where the two leaders, Peter Clement and Julia leaders, Salisbury, Peter are about to make their acceptance address. Oh, oh shit, he's pissed. Shall Get I start? Go for it, Pat. Shall I start? Okay. Well, uh, 
thank you all for coming. And well, where do I start? What a day! They said we couldn't do it. They certainly did. They used every dirty, low-down, lying, southern bastard trick they had against us. But you, the people, you saw right through their shit. I'm sorry about the language there. Sorry about that. I've had a couple of celebratory Sorry pints. It makes me coarser than the grin is funny. Memorably put. Nailed it. <laughs> but to be honest, who can blame Peter for celebrating? Throughout the campaign, you've heard us say that advance are not a political party. A party is what you have when things are going well. When the country is suffering, you don't need a party. You need a team. A team, a team that can team. change things. Can change. But today is day one of a new future. A better, a future. fairer future. Better, fairer. So perhaps we should all be celebrating. Except for the rich. For them, the party's Except over. They shouldn't be celebrating. The they should be putting their shitty pants on and opening their dusty checkbooks. Again, oh, colourful put, but Again, not inaccurate. <laughs> Before we came out here to address the nation, we used our executive powers to pass the Assets and Wealth Act. Working with the tax office, we have produced a definitive list of every person in the country with wealth into the millions. You know the sort of probably you, you rather you don't. Because the likes of you and me are not welcome in their gated communities. Tomorrow, we will be introducing a sweeping reform of the tax system in this country. No more hiding wealth offshore, no more trust funds or creative accounting, a simpler, fairer, unavoidable set of tax laws. So all you bastard public school snobs have got nowhere to hide. And earlier today, we revoked your passports. You want them back? You want to leave like you threatened before the election? That's fine. But first, you're going to pay up. You're going to pay back. Advance are going to turn this country from a nation of warring individuals into a team. To properly fund health and education. To raise the living standards of us all. The pundits said we'd have to raise billions. But you'll see when we've reclaimed what's ours, that's absolute ferret shite. So to you posh twats. The people who pay you a pittance to serve them drinks in their private clubs. The people whose children you raise. So they've got time to get even fucking richer. Advance have this to say to you. It ends today. We are coming for your sports cars and your mansions and your vineyards. It ends today. We will put the wealth today. of this country back we where it should have always been, in the hands of the people who created it. It ends today. Yes, it ends today. And tomorrow, today. we'll start making it tomorrow, fair again, we'll start just like we promised we would. Just and until like then, ladies and gents, and until then, ladies I suggest we all get pissed. <laughs> I can't I argue with that. <laughs> Thank you for your time. <laughs> well, an interesting acceptance speech there from the leaders of Advance. And our apologies for the fruity language. Hopefully, we got that bleeped out for you in time. If not, someone's going to be in trouble. So, as the country braces itself for new government, that's all from us this evening at the National Nightly News. We'll be back tomorrow with full coverage of the first day under Advance. I'm Jeremy Donaldson. Have a peaceful I'm night. Donaldson. Have a peaceful night. Um, right, looks like you've got it now. Thanks for the help, mate. I've got to go. Ferry's about to leave. Probably won't be coming back. Job's yours, mate. Good luck. You're in politics, then? This is some weird fever dream. Am I dying now? Well, not sure, but you should be so lucky. I'll see you tomorrow night. You're not going for a drink? No, nope, got a date. Visit lucky you. Try not to get murdered. Summer ...and experience a holiday that's simply... Un when the programme's finished, you'll get a broadcast report. It's three pages. This first page shows you how well the broadcast went. Each sequence and an overall grade. Remember, grades mean bonuses and they keep the boss happy. If you want to know more about how it went, select more info. If not, select continue to move to the next page. Right, this is an optional section for when you really want to understand what happened during the show. You've got a graph there showing you what the audience did. They're a fickle fucking bunch. And of course, you can really drill into the details if you want to get better at making TV. I never came here, never once. Right, this is the important page. It tells you how much you're going to get paid and how much...
much wealth you have overall. That bollocks at the bottom shows you the financial state of our main advertisers. But you don't own any fucking shares, you're a cleaner for God's sake, so why would you care? This is the last page and it tells you the state of the world, tells you how well the government's doing, and down the bottom there, this one's important, tells you what Channel One currently thinks of you. In other words, what the boss thinks. Alright mate, welcome to the Archive. This is where you can have a quick look back at what you've done and how it looked to the public. There's three sections, broadcast, rushes and adverts. Let's start with broadcast. Pop in there now. Over on the left, that's all the broadcasts that you've done. Choose any well, one of them and select moments, load we'll tape. Once it's finished loading, National you can use the rewind news. and the fast forward at the bottom there to help you get to the bit you want to see. Medicated. And, of course, we'll be going live to advance headquarters to hear what the leaders of this fledgling party have to say on their historic victory. That's all coming up on tonight's National Nightly News. These aren't my cards. Please tell me these aren't my cards. No, they're the right ones, apparently. Oh, but this gives me nothing, Jenny. They must see that. Oh, no. I think they think he won't have anything to say. Oh, for God's sake, come on. It's a huge day. <laughs> He's not... An... Absolutely.
the power on. You need to get at least the bottom four plugs on. Right, let's load up the adverts. You might want to have a bit of a think about it. Your decisions have consequences, don't they? system up and working again and the vision mix is already in headline mode because headlines always come at the start it's really simple mate these two buttons at the bottom of the vision mixer you can see they now have a and b on them and they're to help you pick image a on the left bottom screen here or image b on the right bottom screen here it's really simple this little clock here will count down the number of seconds you have to make your decision. Provided you make a decision in that time, you're fine. And you can change your mind as much as you want until the clock reaches zero. But if you don't make any decision, you'll be fired before you even get to make another choice. I just want to say one more thing, mate. The pictures you choose to show of these people, well, that's how the public is going to perceive them. And that's going to affect their lives. So like with the adverts, choose carefully. No, and we're off. Good luck, mate. Before you get time off, get back in the next break. Yeah, I'm coming, darling. My friend Janet says theirs gets really hot. Is this Janet who thinks dogs have their own secret language? Yeah, the one that mistrusts the moon. Ten seconds, everybody. Not the best source of consumer advice, then. Don't blame me when it explodes. Going in five, four, three. Time to go over to Jeremy Donaldson for tonight's... Good evening, I'm Jeremy Donaldson. Our main headlines tonight. Destination unknown. At the end of Advance's first full week in office, we ask exactly who's leading this charge. Tonight, I'll be discussing what the new future might hold with a leading economist and radical free thinker. With the country's wealth creators in a state of panic and unfavorable rumblings already heard from overseas, I'll be asking my guests whether Advance can deliver on even a fraction of their manifesto promises. Out with the old, Remington's Fist have appointed Sophia Remington as their new CEO. The following photo, taken from our archive, gives us a sense of this influential young firebrand who, at the tender age of 23, becomes the youngest female CEO in history. Sophia Remington has always impressed. She was top of her class at university and graduated with the highest honors, immediately being asked back to lecture. The markets have responded favorably to Sophia's appointment, with stocks rising 30 points in light of the announcement. In her first press conference this afternoon, Sophia announced a children's toy named Mr. Snugglehugs. Sophia promises it will be all the rage this Christmas, but concerns have been raised about the product's safety. Making a splash. Intrepid scientist Dr. David Wong and marine biologist Ingrid Swarsborg and Horgensford have today set off to explore Dante's taint. The recently discovered cave system was previously thought unreachable, but thanks to a new breakthrough in underwater flower technology, the pair hope to successfully reach the imposing central cavern and the undiscovered plant species it contains. Many were surprised that the two scientists, who shared a fractious rivalry for many years, decided to undertake this expedition in each other's company. However, the two have released a joint statement in which they opine geniuses don't have to like each other to achieve remarkable results. Playing the field, rumors abound as sporting legend Johnny Hamsleeves is snapped leaving Bush, one of the capital's hottest clubs. The footballer was caught while out celebrating being named Sports Personality of the Year last week, as reported by this very program. Johnny is seen here with socialite and performance artist Tiffany Lamour, whose recent show, Snatched Inside, Inside My Snatch, has kept her firmly in the public eye. Could romance be on the cards for these two budding angsters? And grievous bodily charm. With advance promising a radical new position on crime, how afraid should we actually be? I'll be going live around the country to talk with people who've seen the criminal justice system from every perspective. With more and more powers passing to the police and less and less oversight, are we using an advanced shaped sledgehammer to crack a nut? All that, a mega morph with a group of young actors who are already experiencing the positive side of the new Assets and Wealth Act firsthand. They'll be talking and performing later. That's all coming up on tonight's National Nightly News.
In the wake of the government's swift enactment of the Assets and Wealth Act, we're talking about Advance's first week in office and what the new future holds. Joining me are Katie Brightman, a leading economist, and Alan James, author of Alan James is Right, The Free Man's Guide to Waking Up. Alan, the government certainly haven't dragged their heels on delivering some of the legislation they promised, but what does the Wealth Act mean for us? Nothing, Jeremy. We're still vassal slaves. We're just in prettier cages. A confident dismissal there. Katie Brightman, do you agree? I'm afraid I don't, no. I think that Advance have realised that the current economic system of unlimited, unending growth is untenable, so they're changing things up. There I agree with you. They're moving to the next steps in the grand plan. Grand plan, Alan? It's all in my book. Alan James is right, Jeremy. We're to become the great herd. Ignorant, sterile and short-lived. That's what they want. Or perhaps Advance have just realised that if we carry on the way we are, we will destroy ourselves and this planet in a mad orgy of consumption, if you'll excuse the colourful metaphor. <laughs> yes, orgy is the right word. Only it'll be the overlords having an orgy on our poor broken backs. It's all in my book. Alan James is... Shamelessly self-promoting? Katie, how do you think the rest of the world will respond to this new approach? I think they're watching carefully. Advance are the most disruptive threat that the world powers have faced since the last Great War. Yes, Katie's right. War is inevitable. Thank you, but that isn't... And this will not be a war like we've ever seen before. We're talking millions of deaths. We're talking high-tech weapons that can level entire cities. We're talking... Out of the wrong orifices? Mock me all you like, Jeremy. But when they murder your parents and they poison your food and they take you away to their camps for hypno-brainwashing, who will be laughing then? That might be a great way to sell books, Alan, but you know full well that isn't going to happen in a democracy. Democracy is dead. Yes, advance are radical, and change is always frightening, but the truth is that the Wealth and Assets Act has made more than 90% of the population wealthier and is on target to produce a permanent end to poverty. Bollocks! But what this young lady doesn't understand, Jeremy, is that these are the same people. Maybe they've rebranded, but it's all a little circus act to keep us from seeing the tyrant behind the curtain. That's where you're wrong, Alan. For a start, they've mobilised the youth vote like we've never seen before. You say mobilise, I call it grooming. The grooming of an entire generation to walk happily into eternal bondage. They're like psychic paedophiles. But based on the facts, Katie, what are your predictions? The Assets and Wealth Act is only the first step. Advance now have a historic budgetary surplus, and as well as properly funding our public services, they're already, un they're already funneling unprecedented amounts into scientific research and the arts. Or, as I call them in my book, Frankenscience and Opie Arts. Like opiates, see? Can we get back to the issue at hand, please, Alan? This is the issue! It's all coming from the water, the chemicals, they're pumping it full of belief juice. Don't get me wrong, I want to see these changes, but only if they're sustainable. If Advance lose their power after spending half of our GDP on dismantling infrastructure, that could be catastrophic. The catastrophe is that they're succeeding. They've got us sat here talking about their puppet show. All right, we're running out of time. Quickly, Alan, um, what does the future look like to you? A bleak space where we've all been figuratively sodomised into submission. Oh, of course. Katie? We might be on the eve of a brave new world. God knows we need some change, but we need to be cautious. Let's walk forwards with our eyes open. Two very different visions of the future there. Alan James, Katie Brightman, thank you for joining me. When we come back, I'll be investigating law and order before Meghan meets some beneficiaries of the Assets and Wealth Act. That's all coming up tonight on the National Nightly News. One minute back. You know, I think they might do some good. I hope so too, Jeremy. How much are you being paid by them then? Shut the fuck up, Alan. I've never heard so much shit in my life. <laughs> well, we'll see who's full of shit, won't we? Alan, I can explain it to you, but unfortunately, I can't understand it for you. Well, I don't know what she meant by that. <laughs> I've said a bit of word and that's all I can do. Ten seconds, everybody. Is Widow Jakey scared of the big bird caught you with water? If that sticks, I'll just Five, four, three. Welcome back. In our second segment, we're going to be taking a deep dive into the state of law and order in our country. Advance have already tasked what they are calling a solutions team to move this serious social problem to the top of the list. Tonight, we go behind the headlines to make the people who live with the criminal justice system 
every day of their lives. First up, we have Gregory Judge, a lawyer who sees the problems close up on the front line. Can you hear me, Gregory? Yes, I've got you, Jeremy. Thanks for having me. What's it like on the front line of the hard face of the cold hand of justice? Uh, well, as you can imagine, Jeremy, we are massively understaffed in this country. Uh, we're working every hour we can just to try and cope with the caseloads on our desks. Which must affect the quality of support you can offer. Well, we can barely keep up with demand, Jeremy. Uh, there just simply isn't enough being done at a systemic level to relieve the problem. We need more support from ministers. We what are you doing? Well, we need change at a structural so level, Jeremy. I'm leaving, Greg. Not a good time, darling. It never is, is it? I'll be at my mother's. It never is, is it? Just hang on. Just hang on. No, the, the problem isn't a local one, Jeremy. It's nationwide. Just give me five minutes. I'm talking to Jeremy Donaldson. Oh, have you mentioned your affairs? No. Well, it, uh, the affairs of the Justice Department that we should be concerned about... Hello, Mr. Donaldson. Hello, Mrs. Judge. We need... Uh, we need legislation to relieve the pressure on our public service. Sorry to interrupt the news, Mr. Donaldson. Can I have a moment to tell my husband I'm leaving? Yes, I totally understand. Yes. Quite the picture of a burdened legal sector there. Gregory Judge, thank you for joining us. Gregory Judge. Thank Next, I'm joined by Police Chief Constable Next Bob Peel, a man Chief with a very Constable different Bob perspective Peel. on our nation's crime. Do you think there's a problem with the system, Bob? Oh, I'm sure we all do, Jeremy. I'm sure we all long for a return to the days when you could safely walk the streets of your community at night, looking in through windows and generally enjoying your neighbours without the risk of being terrorised by some thug with a knife. Uh, or cosh. So you feel the streets simply aren't safe anymore? So Where have we gone wrong, Bob? Well, that's not a simple question, Jeremy, but I think it all comes down to moral decay. We've diluted our culture and lost touch with what it means to be a citizen of this once great country. Also, as the vicar noted in Sunday's sermon, we probably shouldn't have banned hanging. And to what do you attribute this moral decay? Foreigners, gays and gypsies mainly. It's all in the Bible. Look, Leviticus clearly states that... Oh, bugger, hang on a moment. Jeremy, a bloody gimp's escaped. <laughs> Delia? Delia, could you give me a little help, please, dear? Delia, could you give me a little help, please, dear? As I was saying, Jesus didn't like immigrants much, did he? And just to be clear, you think it's the immigrants who are responsible for the moral decay? Absolutely, Jeremy. Oh, back in your box, Clive. Back in your box. Delia, I really could use a little help with this. I'm oh, sorry, darling. I was spaying the badgers. Yes, yes. I'm talking to Jeremy Donaldson. Clive, could you put him back oh, in the box? Oh, Clive, you know it's Wednesday. Back in, back in your gym space. And you whose responsibility is it to make a change, Bob? Well, it is certainly not the responsibility of the decent, good, white people. Darling, where's the padlock? Oh, hold on just a moment. Oh, Clive, this simply won't do. Naughty, naughty, naughty boy. Mummy said... Clive, I am not having this again. Mummy said, get back in your gates. No, naughty, you beast, Clive. As I was saying, Jeremy, moral decay. Crime is the responsibility of the criminal, no one else. Look, everyone has a sob story, but we don't all end up as barbarians, do we? Look, when our daughter Alice comes home with an A minus, does she go on a killing spree? No, she takes three of her pills and hides under the stairs like a normal child. Thank you, Bob. Bob Peel there. We're locking down the police's position on morality for us. And finally tonight, hopefully uninterrupted, it's time to get to the heart of the matter. It's time to get Tony to Dawson the matter. has recently been released from prison after serving three years for aggravated assault, burglary and menacing a swap. He's agreed to talk to us today, which is also, I believe, his birthday. Many happy returns, Tony. Many happy Cheers, returns, Jez. Tony. Call me titwank, Tony. Everybody else does. No, I'm not going to be doing that. Can you tell us what it's like in prison, Tony? Titwank, Tony. Hey! Prison's a mixed bag. Structure's quite nice, but... It's a constant battle against institutionalisation, as you can imagine, and obviously titwanks are quite hard to come by. I'm picking up that you're not alone there, Tony. Titwank, Tony. Yeah, sorry, my friends are throwing me a surprise party. Good bunch of lads. OK, well, we're trying that you get back to that party as soon as possible. First, let me ask you this. Do you feel that your time spent in prison helped to rehabilitate you in any way, Tony? Tit wank, Tony. I don't think it's as easy as that, Jez. I don't think it's as easy as that, Jez. Soap and... 
Yeah, I think asking that is an oversimplification. It sounds like it's getting quite busy there, Tony, like but uh, let's try and soldier on. Since leaving custody, have you been able to Since find a new custody, job? Yeah, all the boys are here. Big Chris. Oi, oi. Little Chris. Oi, oi. And Vampire Chris. Oi, oi. And Vampire Chris. <laughs> this one's, yeah? Yep. One sec, love. Shit when Tony's on the news. One sec, love. Rehabilitation's difficult with the current system, Jez. It's just not set up for it, you know? It's inherently unjust. So, do you feel tempted to... I'm sorry, who's this guy? You are joking. Chrissy Freebollock has only got Mr Fancy, oh. Uh, not now, fellas, I'm on the news. It's it. It seems like we've caught you at a bad time. <laughs> oh, I can't really hear you, mate. It's getting a bit busy here. Jesus. Yes, we uh, Jesus. seem to be losing the signal no here, Tony. No fucking way, lad. <laughs> Believe that. Well, we're just trying to get that signal back. Well, I think we... <laughs> yes, Tony. Tony, I mean, we're literally waiting for two seconds. How has this happened, Tony? Lost our train of thought there a little. Hopefully, you, the viewer at home, have managed to gain a broader understanding of the serious and complex issues around law and order. After the break, Megan will be live with some plucky young thespians. Don't go away. We'll be back after these messages. One minute back, everybody. That went well. Quite drunk, it's been a great night. In this next section, there's a bit of music. If you edit in time with the music, you can see the result on the vision mixer, and the public will love that. Don't worry if you don't, though, you won't get punished for it or nothing. Just try and stay in the groove. Also, one last tip when the music starts, turn down the broadcast volume. Right, enjoy the music bit. God, I love music. God, I'm so pissed. I think I might go and throw up in a bit. In this dressing room, probably bang his head against the wall. Look, it's alright, I've got this. I'm sure he's on his way. Come on, it's gone. Come back. How hard can it be? This is on you. Ten seconds, everybody. We're gonna open on Megan. Camera two. Going in five, four, three. Welcome to Black, I'm Megan Wolf, and on tonight's Culture Spot, I'll be chatting with one of the first beneficiaries of the Assets and Wealth Act, a team of inspiring young people from Scritchford Sixth Form College who today received a grant from Advance to take their play, Hey, Friendship, on a tour of local secondary schools. Welcome to you all. Well, let's start with you two, Harriet and Charlotte Winstanley-Hamilton. Girls, you must be thrilled. We are, Megan. We're overwhelmed, to be honest. And I believe you two are sisters. Is that right? Yes, yeah, Charlotte's my oldest. I'm the older, yeah, more, popular older <laughs> more popular one. I'm joking. The Harriet and Trey were really the ones who came up with the whole idea. So, Harry and I were shooting the breeze in the cafeteria, and I said, hey, let's actually do something. So I went to look for a drama teacher. Uh, but she'd been laid off due to budget cuts. Fortunately, I directed a pantomime when I was at university, so, so I knew the ropes, as it were. Oh, right, yes, but you're the maths teacher, aren't you? Uh, yes, that's me, Jeff Algebra, maths teacher. Maths is really important. Oh, thanks, Steve. Maths is Really important. Yeah, thanks, As is theatre. Really it's one of the oldest art forms in history. Aristotle. I just think that when we travel around all these problem schools and the poor kids see us, they say, hey, I really want to be like those attractive kids. And that's a very beautiful and powerful thing. We touch our audiences and they touch us right back. I suppose with a surname like Algebra, there was really only one choice of career for me. <laughs> My wife, Angela, and I, we often laugh about it. <laughs> Angela Algebra. Yes. We just want to bring a bit of song and joy into people's lives. And teach people about the difficult issues. The issues in the play are what really matter. And I think you're going to be showing us an extract from this play, aren't you? That's right. To put into context, I play a young first year who's having some troubles at school. Her character doesn't actually have a name, yeah, because in a way she's like all of us. It's like a metaphor. Like maybe she's you at home, or like, maybe, maybe she's, she's you, Megan. Maths is really important. Yeah, thanks, Steve. <laughs> Put it in, Coach. Yes, yeah, thanks, Steve. Steve. <laughs> right, well, yes, I'm going to have a little chat with your right, teacher well, while you I'm run off and get ready. I can't wait to see it. That's it, that way. <clears throat> 
So, Jeff, when did you first hear about the grant? Uh, two days ago. A letter from Advance arrived at the school. Now, the headmaster thought it was all a prank, but his secretary retrieved it from his bin and brought it to me. How? How did you react? I also threw it in the bin. But then Harriet and Trey rescued it, and uh, they, they, they rang the number at the bottom of the page, and next thing you know, we're on tour. Wow. Well, I think we can all guess which way you'll be voting from now on. Do you know what? It's funny, because Angela and I don't usually vote. We we're not very political. I'm a mathematician, of course, and she's a paraplegic, mainly. But we did used to watch that Peter Clements DIY show back in the day, and so we thought, uh, why not? Let's have a go with this old democracy thing. OK. And here we back. Well, well, are. <laughs> Good stuff. <laughs> Fucking brilliant. <laughs> so let's have a look at a short section so, of Hey, a a short friendship. Of hey. <laughs> friendship. Dear diary. Dear diary. I'm not sure I can take another day at this school. I'm not sure I can take another day at this. School. Another day of tears. 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 Another day of fears. 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 But still I walk the corridors alone. Alone. Um, dreading what might be around every corner. What's around the corner? What's around the corner? What's around the corner? Oh, hi, Gary. Oh, heavens no! It's Gary the Fist! Gary the Fist! Going somewhere, little first year? Great. I've been looking for some poor victim to bully all morning. But will this make me feel better about my violent father? Violent father. Excuse me, I'm late for maths. It's my favourite subject and so important. Um, maths is for losers. What? Maths is for losers. My arm's stuck, coach. Keep going for fuck's sake. <laughs> right, uh, uh, maths is for losers. Now, give me your lunch money. Double lunch for me today, but... Why am I only truly happy when I'm eating? Not today, Gary the Fist. What do you mean, not today? Who are you? Oh, my arm's free coat. Brilliant, keep going. Oh, right, uh, uh, who are you to stand up to me? I'm Gary the Fist, and you're just a sad little girl with two gay dads who's all alone. That's where you're wrong, Gary the Fist. These are my two new friends. Vanessa is captain of the netball team. Yeah! And Blake owns a motorbike. Yeah. But, but, I can't fight all three of you. And I don't have any friends of my own. Take a look at me. Take a little look at my face I could be you She could be you And you could be me Or you could be me Life can be be cheeky If you work as a team choice to remain so stop now make a different choice Gary the Fist. People think that folks like me probably shouldn't exist, but that's just prejudice, and I'd do better if you knew the way that I became Gary, Gary the, the Fist. Fist. I grew up on a council estate. The park was hip, but the flats weren't great. My dad used to come home drunk and late, and he'd hit my mum for dinner. He had to wait. Oh, where's my dinner? Oh. Women 
is wrong. I guess life's pretty hard on a council estate. 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 It's so damn hard on a council estate. Thankfully, that's all we have time for tonight on the National Nightly News. Join us tomorrow night for all the headlines from across the country. My name's Jeremy Dalton. Have a peaceful night. And we're out. Oh, that was brilliant. <laughs> what the literal fuck was that? I believe that was art. I believe I've got a 14-inch cock, but it doesn't make it so. I have a similar belief about an adequate paycheck. Friendship! Oh, oh, someone please get these twats out of my studio.